Sandy Wiley. I want to talk to you about a very important subject about sexual abuse and therapy. Um, sexual abuse and therapy doesn't always um, seem obvious. <laughs> uh, being sexually abused ruined my life and I'm still not over what has happened to me and that's why I want to get the word out about these unethical criminal immoral psychologists because it's not always clear like it is um, you know it's a it's a type of rape called statutory rape and that's not always clear I mean when someone rapes you when you're an adult it's obvious because you're not giving your consent you're saying no no but when you do give your consent it doesn't when you're in it at the time it doesn't feel like rape because you're allowing that so you can't I couldn't wrap my head around why people called it rape and why um, these psychologists were jailed in certain states because it was considered statutory rape. I didn't understand that I couldn't give consent. I thought, well, you know, I want this to happen. I'm excited about it. Um, I'm not telling him no. It'd be one thing if I, um, you know, pushed him away, <coughs> excuse me, and said no, but I wasn't saying no. So how can it be rape? But it was rape. And I'll let you in on how it starts and how insidious it gets and how it destroyed my life and I turn into an alcoholic over it. Which I'm still battling with. I'm still battling that even today, years and years later. Uh, first it began with him seeing, you know, really kind. Of course, I told you like before, saying you're special, you're different, you're, you're beautiful, you're intelligent, I care about you, all those things that seem very benign um, and very kind in, in the beginning, but um, it's just to plant a seed, you know. And if I was upset, he'd, he'd say, come in for an extra um, therapy session for free, you know. I won't charge you because it was... It was my invite. And, you know, one night he called me up at 7 o'clock and he said, Oh, you know, um, you seemed upset today. I think we really need to talk about this. And, you know, I said, All right, we'll talk about it on Monday when I come in. And he said, You know what? I don't want to wait over the weekend. I think you should come in now. This was 7 o'clock in the evening. And it was like pitch black out because it was nighttime in the winter <laughs> and it gets dark at like four or five o'clock then and um so I said you know it's kind of late and I'm I'm not pressed you know and he said just come in anyway I think it's really important I don't want to wait until the weekend to talk I don't want the whole weekend to go by and wait till Monday to talk about it so I told my husband and son that I was going to see him and they both looked at me like I'm crazy like what <laughs> isn't like it, it it's like seven o'clock hasn't he gone home for the day but it was a home office <laughs> that's another thing most of the um abuse a lot of abuse happens when it's at their home because then there's no one around like in an office there's other people around right uh, but when they have their own practice in their own home and then there's no one around they can get away with a lot more because there's no one to check you know to hear or see like see someone or hear anything you know it just makes it more convenient so my husband and son thought I was crazy but he said it was really important he wanted to see me so I, I drove I drove in the cold dark night I went in and then you know he he really sexually abused me um he just told me how special and caring I was. He held me in his arms and he, he put me, he picked me up and put me in his lap. Then he put his tongue down my throat. Now I kid you not, he did this, but I did not push him away and, and, and tell him no. 
and this is how it gets you know um, you know this is how it was very hard for me to um, to think of it as like rape and and not realize you know that I couldn't give my consent because I was a patient and he was a doctor he had a doctor's degree he was a doctor dr. James Bavaria and I was his patient and it was not um, an equal relationship like if I had met him at a bar or if I had met him through friends or anywhere else socially <laughs> if I met him on tinder <laughs> I met him because I was a vulnerable patient looking for help psychological mental health and he was a doctor had a doctor degree in mental health so he was the doctor and I was the patient so and that's how we met and it wasn't you know a relationship of equals <laughs> so I couldn't understand you know I thought I was in an equal relationship when I was not and my other psychologist dr. Richard guys he told me too so I had another psychologist I was seeing all along for like 16 years he told me you're responsible for this you made the decision too but I couldn't make that decision because I was the patient I couldn't give consent and it took me many 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 years to, to finally realize that that it was rape that it wasn't consent because I couldn't give consent just like my handicapped son my son is 28 years old right but he's not a normal 28 year old male he's severely brain da damaged from meningitis when he was four years old so my son cannot give sexual consent even though he's of legal age he's 28 years old um, and my son was sexually abused too although there wasn't any proof of it um, but they fired that woman um, immediately and rushed her out the door and there was nothing said and I could tell my because every time I could tell my son would always be getting erections I mean I knew something was going on with that woman and that woman at the time was only a few years older than my son I don't know the exact age but um, she was but it doesn't matter see even if someone is you know 20 and my son is 28 that woman can't be with my son sexually because my son is a two-year-old emotionally even though you know he's 28 years old in years emotionally cognitively he's only two so it would be like going having sex or being sexual with a two-year-old if someone was with my son which would be rape so it was very hard to wrap my head around this and um, and that's how it began by him you know French kissing me he forced his tongue down my throat but I didn't push him back I didn't say no stop I didn't do any of that I allowed it and dr. Richard Geist said because I allowed it I was equally responsible for it well, would you say that you know that's not right what about a father sexually abusing his daughter he could say well she allowed it my 14 year old allowed me to have sex with her but it, you see what I'm saying it's incest it's not someone can't give consent and I couldn't understand uh, and this man got brutal he physically abused me um, he pushed me around he spit in my face he swore F you F you he swore at me and all the while my other psychologist dr. Richard Geis was telling me it was my fault you know that you know I allowed this and he was on Jim's side he told me I could never ever report Jim because it would ruin his life well what did he do to my life <laughs> he told me I was responsible for Jim Jim's life and Jim told me I was responsible for his patients can you believe that can you believe that 
I'm responsible for 40 patients. I'm a patient. I'm a, I'm a patient myself seeking mental health at that time. Not anymore. I would never go to another doctor ever again. Um, but this is how it happens. And I wanted to come on and explain to you how these things happen. First, it's very, you know, benign, or it seems benign, where they say you're special. There's no touching at all. They just, you know, get into your head. That's why they call them shrinks. They get into your head. They say, you're special. I care about you. And these are like heady words, like you're intelligent. You're smart. You're one of a kind. You're unique. You're talented. No one is like you. I really care about you. And then they want more time with you. They want, oh, come in, you know, come in at 7 o'clock at night. Come in on the weekend. I used to go two hours on Sundays if you would see me, you know. On, you know, then they would spend more and more time with you. You'd become more and more, you know, enmeshed with them. And sooner, and then it would be, you know, innocuous touches like, you know, just hugging each other, you know. Nothing like sexual in the beginning, you know. It would just be like hugging, holding, um, like maybe a pat on the back or a hand on the knee. Like all innocent, like, touches that you would, that were not sexual until they became sexual and they always would become sexual. And then it got to the point where he would be sitting there I'm paying him for the sessions and he'd tell me all about his problems he'd tell me about how his father used to beat him up how his mother used to give him the silent treatment he'd tell me all about his past relationships with women how um, after five years um, one girlfriend just you know walked out of the relationship with no explanation she just said um, I don't want to see you anymore like and he was dumbfounded like he didn't know what he did wrong. I mean, but this wasn't how it was supposed to be. I was supposed to be, I'm paying him money. He's the doctor. He's supposed to be listening to my problems. I'm not supposed to be there for his problems. He should have got his own psychologist um, or went to a supervisor or a colleague or a friend. But he wasn't supposed to be taking up my time with his problems because I was the patient. So it took me a long, long time to, you know, to even like admit this, you know, admit that this was abuse, this was sexually abused, it was considered like statutory rape. Uh, Dr. Richard Geis was involved in it because he saw us both <laughs> as a couple. Can you imagine a couple's counselor seeing, um, a psychologist who's having sex with his patient and the patient is married and living with her son and husband and he's seeing us both like we're a couple when we're not a couple I'm being you know sexually exploited and abused <laughs> and he's seeing us and and Dr. Geis is seeing us like we're an equal couple coming in like a married couple coming in for help on their relationship. So even, so that even made it more difficult when you have another doctor telling you that, you know, um, that this is normal, this is okay, that you're responsible, you're equal, um, you have an equal part in this. So I have like two of them. And then there was a third one. <laughs> Dr. Jeffrey Fortgang, who also saw me and Jim. Um, so I had like three of these psychologists telling me that I'm responsible, I have an equal role in this, when really I was the victim. I was the one who was being sexually exploited. I was the one being sexually abused that I could never have an equal part in this because I'm the patient and they're all professional. One from Yale, one from Harvard, one from Duquesne. All Ivy League schools and all doctors and I'm just like a very vulnerable woman who had severe anxiety I had borderline personality disorder my father was schizophrenic um, I had a severely brain damaged son who was an invalid 
who couldn't go to the bathroom by himself or wash himself. Um, I had a um, narcissistic mother who used to beat me up and make me bleed and leave bruises on me. I had all these things, and I'm going to these professionals for psychological help, and they're all walking over me and sexually exploiting me for their own fun. So I want to, I need to, I've written many books. I'll, get, I'll drop the links to my books below. Love Bomb by a Harvard psychologist, that's Dick Geist. Um, emails of an unethical psychologist, that's Dr. Um, James Barbaria. And then Love Outside the Boundaries, that's my sexual relationship with Dr. Barbaria. I've written and written and written in hopes to get um, people, you know, who think that, you know, it's exciting, it's thrilling. This handsome, handsome doctor, you know, wants me, desires me, thinks I'm special. I mean, and if you've never felt that way at all your whole life, that's pretty heady stuff. I mean, that, you know, it's hard to turn away from that. It's, and it's even harder to find, to even think that's like abuse because you're saying, well, how can he be sexually abusing me? I, I want this. I'm agreeing to this. You know, I'm not telling him no. Like in, you know, rape between consensual adults is when one person says no and the other person forces themselves on you. That's rape. But if you're not saying no and you're allowing it, then you think you're giving consent, but you're not giving consent because you're the patient. You can never give consent. And it took me a long, long time to see that, that I, because these other doctors were trying to brainwash me. Dr. Geist, Dr. Forking, they're trying to brainwash me into thinking that it is an equal relationship, you know, and, and he just got more abusive and more abusive the more I went out with him. One time I tried to leave, he was so abusive. And he blocked every door. I ran, you know, I ran out the back door, he blocked it. I ran out the front door. I went downstairs in the basement and tried to run out the, um, the office door in the basement. And he would not allow me. And then I find, um, one time I finally got out into his porch and he picked me up and threw me on the couch and he started violently shaking me and spitting in my face and screaming and swearing at me. So he was violent. He was physically violent, emotionally abusive sexually abusive, you know, and to this day, years and years later, like how many, that was like five or six years ago, I'm still not over it because I'll never trust another psychologist again, so I'll never go, I'll never get, I'll never go to another therapist ever, ever again, so, so it's better just to heed my advice, um, and be prepared. Um, do not let your psychologist, I mean, if you do go to therapy, if you do choose to take, you know, that leap and that risk, don't ever um, let them do that ever, ever to you. Don't ever let them get in your head. By Once that you hear the word special, run. Run when you hear that word because that's the start of it, you know. It starts out small. It doesn't start out, you know, with touching and everything it leads up to that but first they you know mess with your mind you know so just be careful and you know that's what I that's why I wrote these books I want to help people like myself um, who didn't know any better really because other all the other doctors were telling me that you know I'm responsible um, if everyone tells you you're responsible then you start to believe it it, it took it just took years and years for me to finally figure. And especially one um, one person, Nancy, um, who I was friends with through childhood, when she found out, she told me, you know, you were a vulnerable patient. You know, they took advantage of you. And that's the first time that made me think, you know, like um, when she said that. And then I started reading literature. I started Googling and reading um how it's a criminal act, how psychologists have been in jailed for years over having consensual, what they call, what they said was consensual sex, uh, but it never can be consensual. That's the whole thing. And all these people who stood by and supported it, it supported the person who sexually abused me, were just as guilty, you know? They were just as guilty. 
just like um, the people who stood by and watched that big monster beat physically beat my son and give him a black eye and bruises all over him and they said nothing those people got fired too because they sat by and they did nothing and watched my son got beaten up okay so these other psychologists who sat by and even saw Jim and supported Jim they were equally ex sexually exploiting me even though they weren't having sex with me because they did nothing and they encouraged it. Even worse than doing nothing is encouraging, is encouraging it. So I hope that, you know, I've gotten through to some people and I'm going to put this all over the social medias um, so people can understand. I'll get the links to my books below and um, I hope that, you know, I can get through um, so people won't, can be a little more wiser than I was because... I was pretty naive and stupid.